sup nerds and welcome back to the channel sorry not sorry for uploading a video in a long while some of it's job related but most of it's just not me getting after it making videos but anyway in this video we're start i'm going to start a series on the basics of photography and this one in particular going over aperture and what it is and how i use it in photography quick disclaimer if you guys see affiliate links down in the description below chances are they are going to be affiliate links Meaning, if you click on them and actually end up purchasing something through those links, I get a cute little commission, and it's no additional cost to you guys. Anyway, uh, back to the video. So, what is Aperture exactly? Aperture in photography is the opening in the lens that is created by the retracting blades that are inside that lens. The aperture of the lens actually controls the amount of light that goes through the lens at any one time. You can think of it as like water going through a pipe. The larger the pipe, the more water can go through. The larger your aperture, the more light can go through at any one time. When you're checking the settings in your camera, aperture is displayed as F and then a number. For example, F2, F4, F5.6, something like that. That is your aperture setting. What this number actually means is, so that number right there, f2, f2.8, f5.6, what that means is the number of times the aperture, aperture's diameter can fit into the focal length of your lens. Here's an example. If you're shooting on a lens that's 50 millimeters, 50 mil lens, and you're shooting at an f4, what that means is the diameter can fit into the 50 millimeters four times. More specifically, that's 12.5 millimeters. Here's the thing. Does knowing the exact diameter of your aperture gonna affect your photography and your shooting style? Probably not. I know at least for me, I never think about the exact diameter when I'm shooting. So what exactly does aperture affect when we're doing photography? Let's jump into that. So aperture affects our photography in two ways. The first one is depth of field. The second one is the overall exposure of your image. We're gonna go over the first one, depth of field. So let's say the wider your aperture, meaning the lower the number, the shallower, shallower, the shallower your depth of field is gonna be. The smaller your aperture or the higher the number, such as F16, the longer your depth of field is gonna be. For example, in this clip, I'm shooting it in two point at f 2.8. You'll notice that my subject is clearly in focus, but the background is really blurred out. Now take note as I'm shifting the focus from the foreground on my subject to the background. At any one point, there's only a very small sliver in focus in the image. So using a wide aperture allows photographers to take photos so that just their subject is in focus background is blurred out so that way when you look at an image your attention is drawn immediately to the subject and if there's anything in the background it's just blurred out and you don't even bother seeing it photographers often use this for doing portraits so that way you're just focused on your person and nothing in the background is distracting you now this time I set an aperture in this little clip to f16 notice you have Notice I have my subject completely in focus, and then the background is actually more focused than it was at 2.8. And as we begin to shift the focus from my foreground and on my subject to the background, more of the scene is in focus at any one time. So a longer depth of field allows a photographer to capture more of a scene in focus. One example of this is taking group photos. You want to be able to capture as many phases in focus as possible, so that way, so like a Christmas party or another family event, you can see your cousins, your, your sister, or whatever, and make fun of them because they blink and they pick their nose or they sneeze at the, at the best possible time. Another example of this is taking landscapes or maybe just in a scene which is where you're trying to tell a story. It's much easier to tell a story when more elements of your image are in focus. The second impact the aperture has on photography is the overall exposure. Simply put, the wider the aperture, the more light is allowed in at any one time. The smaller the aperture, the less light, and the darker your exposure is gonna be. So here's the situation that you might find yourself in. 
got your exposure set to where you want it and you're taking a portrait of your friend. You notice that you can probably blur out the background a little bit more by widening up your aperture. But if you do that, you end up brightening your image, but you, you don't want to do that. It's already bright enough, it's right where you want it. Well, now begins the balancing game of balancing your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO to get in that proper exposure. So as you begin to make adjustments to your aperture, you will have to make adjustments accordingly to the ISO and the shutter speed. And like I said, I'll make videos specifically on shutter speed and ISO in future videos. So if you're not comfortable yet with adjusting the other settings, shutter speed and ISO, you can always put your camera into aperture priority mode. So for like my Nikon cameras, I set them on A mode. Now if you use Canon, uh, they use AV mode. And if you have another brand like Fujifilm or something else, uh, just look it up on Google and figure out exactly which mode corresponds accurately to aperture priority mode. And start just messing around with that and taking photos in different environments. Start taking them in indoor settings and outdoor settings and uh, cloudy days and then look back at your image data. So if your aperture is always the same, so you just set it at f4 and you begin experimenting in different environments. Begin to notice how the ISO and the shutter speed change to maintain that proper exposure. Aperture is one of the technical foundations of photography. Once you understand that and the other two settings in photography, you'll be able to greatly improve your ability to capture image that you are envisioning in your so if you have any questions specifically on Aperture, go ahead and put them down in the description below in the comment section. Um, if you got questions on the other two, wait for future videos to put them in the comment section for that one so that people have questions or have the same question, they can see that video and see them in that comment section. But anyway, if this video actually helped you out, like before, leave a like to let me know. If it didn't, well then, again, don't. And if you dislike the video, that, that's fine. Not everybody's gonna like my videos. Dislike the video. But if you do, put down in the comments why you disliked it. It might be one of those things where I actually make my videos that much better. And until that next video, later.